Hello people of the tube and welcome to this next video in which I'm going to be looking at hooking the Spark app up to Reaper. Now the Spark app does actually come with Persona Studio One as the preferred door so most people will be connecting up to that but I've had a few inquiries from people that are pretty heavily invested in Reaper that have got a lot of experience and they don't want to install another door or they don't want to move to another piece of software. And online there are a number of videos and comments about uh, the difficulty in connecting up to Reaper and the fact that when you bring the music in, the soundtrack in, that uh, the volume is very low and it's very difficult to work with. And I thought I'd do this quick video in response to those questions and just see if we can get it working in Reaper because that is probably going to be my door of choice going forwards. So let's get on with the video. Okay, so at the computer I've got the Spark Amp hooked up to my PC. It's a Windows PC and that's hooked up via the USB cable that comes with the amplifier. Now I was hoping to do a dry one hit video where everything was all fresh and new. Unfortunately, as some people have mentioned on YouTube and other social media sites, uh, it wasn't quite as straightforward as I'd hoped. So this is actually now going to be take two. And so when I run up Reaper, as I will now, and I installed Reaper earlier, and I've obviously run it before, I'm now going to get this error opening devices. I'm just going to close out of that for the moment. When you first run up Reaper, and I'm working with the evaluation license here, uh, when you first run it up, it does say that it can't find an audio interface and do you want to uh, link to one? And the recommendation is yes, and I would say yes, you want to do that. But if, like me, you don't have that option, then you can go to Options and Preferences, and in here there are a couple of things that we want to do. The first, under Media, there is an, an item volume control option in here and it's set to uh, handle is plus dB on top of item. I change, I'm going to change that to the center of the item and we're going to use that, I hope, when we get the waveform to actually make it a little bit uh, bigger and, and louder. But we also need to click on device and the audio options that we want is going to be ASIO, A-S-I-O. So we click that one. At the moment this is set up to use my laptop speakers and what I want to do is I want to pick up the Spark Amp. Now even though the Spark Amp is connected to my PC and I've restarted my PC with it connected, it doesn't find the driver. And annoyingly, it doesn't actually go out and look for it on the internet. So we're going to need to do that manually. And this is one of the things that I had to play around with. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come out of Reaper, and for the moment, I'm just going to turn the amp off. And what you need to do is go to the Spark or the Positive Grid website and the Spark support page. Now I will link to this URL in the description below. And two things that you want to do. The first is under Spark registration and download Studio One Prime. And obviously if you're going to use the Studio One door, then this would be a good time to do that. Um, but we're just going to register our product. So um, initially when I went into here, I clicked the submit button on the image thinking, what on earth am I doing? Duh, of course that's a picture and you need to click on the URL here. That will then launch this um, page here. So register your product and you can get the serial number for your amp off of a very tiny little sticker that is found on the back um, just next to where the USB cable plugs in. So I would advise that you do that at your earliest convenience. Okay, so if we just go back, in that same usage area on the support page, you'll see Spark Windows ASIO driver. Now I'm running on a Windows 10 machine. Um, what you will use if you're going to be um, doing this on a Mac, I'm not 100% sure. 
but I'm doing Windows so I'm just going to click on that particular link and then I'll click on the Spark Azure Driver 4.8 link here. Now I tend to like to keep my drivers locally um, just in case so if I do a download here then I'm going to download that into my downloads folder and then I can put that off onto my backup drive as normal and you see that that downloads pretty quickly so show in folder there is the file if I right mouse click that extract all that's now extracted and then we can go into that folder okay we've got a Mac OS X folder right I, I don't know for sure um, but that may well be the Mac driver for um, a Mac I, I don't know it would seem strange to have that on the downloads page listed under Windows driver um, but possibly that is a driver if you're running Mac you're going to need to do your own homework on that I'm not sure but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to double click on the Windows driver select yes to these uh, little options here and I'm just going to close out these windows because the installation actually opens up behind the other windows first of all when I did this I was sitting there looking thinking where is it where's the window anyway we'll go next and install I'm just going to install that into the default location so it's preparing the installation copying the files and then we get the pre-installation was successful click next to continue so we go next and finish and that should be your driver installed now you do need to disconnect and reconnect your device I've actually got my device turned off at the moment uh, so I'm just going to go yes so we will now turn the device on and we'll launch Reaper Now we're going to get the error about the audio device not being found and that's because it's currently trying to find my speakers. So I'm going to go into the preferences. Under device I need to choose the ASIO audio driver and now under the audio ASIO driver I've got the option for my Boss ME80 which I've had uh, installed previously so Reaper found that already. I've got my positive grid USB audio device and that's the one that we want and for the moment I'm just going to select all of the defaults. Uh, now I'm not used to working with Reaper, it's something that is brand new to me and uh, so if you want to know actually how to use Reaper I would suggest looking at some of the other videos that are out there. Now the other thing that I found is very often when I tried to do anything with this is if I insert a new track and I just set this to record okay it is recording this time which is good sometimes it comes up and it says that it cannot find the amp um, what I did is I just rebooted my machine and rebooted the amp but that seems to have worked so I'm just going to um, delete this track and give me a moment, I'm just going to hook up my guitar and we'll see if we can actually get some content into Reaper. Be back in just a moment. Okay, so I've got my guitar and we will insert a new track. We'll arm that ready to record and we'll hit the record button and we'll just play it a small piece, it's just my REM track. Okay, let's just uh, stop recording. little bit tight for space so I'm actually going to put my guitar away for the moment because so I put that away I'm working at the dining room table today so I really didn't want to uh, mark it or scratch the guitar 
So back in Reaper, what I'm going to do here is just to trim this track a little bit. So more into the music, move to the beginning. Ooh, okay. And then the waveform is actually quite small and some people have said that, you know, that sort of makes it a little bit unusable. And when you've got the volume mixers at the bottom here about midway, then it does become a little bit interesting. So if I just play that now, then it is very quiet. In fact, you can barely hear it. Let's just nudge those up a little bit. And turning the volume and the gain controls up and down on the amp actually make no difference, which threw me a little bit. So you've got to use the sliders actually in the software and you can actually get some decent volume out of those. Now the other thing that we can do by moving the, um, the main volume control in the preferences, let me just go back to that again. Uh, so in preferences, um, I changed in media the handle to be center of the item. It does mean that I can now drag this up and I can actually see the waveform a little bit better. And obviously I believe that that's now increased the volume. So I'm just going to take these sliders down so we don't deafen everybody. We will play that. And now we can actually get some pretty big volume out of it. And we could take those um, sliders up further you know, if, if we wanted to. But for me, I think that that shows that you can hook your spark amp up to Reaper relatively quickly and easily. Just download the driver from the website, install it. Um, like I said, today I didn't need to reboot anything, it just worked. Um, yesterday when I, did, uh, when I did this, I had to just reboot the machine and restart the amp. So whether that has done something in the um, registry and that was left over from yesterday when I uninstalled the driver ready for this video. I'm not entirely sure. So install the driver and if you find that Reaper still won't see it, then turn your amp off, reboot your machine and hopefully then it will be okay. And then really we're just operating in Reaper as normal now. Um, once you've configured the driver, everything just works and I tend to find that the volume is, is pretty okay. I'm quite happy with that volume. Uh, how it will work with other music tracks I'm not sure but you've just seen how you can make the waveform larger and smaller to uh, compensate accordingly. Um, now I, I don't know Reaper at all as I've said so if you want to learn more about Reaper then I would suggest looking at some other videos um, but yeah this is using the Spark Amp as an audio interface to Reaper. Video done, wasn't expecting to do this one, but for those of you that wanted it, I hope you found this useful. If you do, please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done so, and if you found this video useful, please hit the like button because supporting the channel is really great and I appreciate it very much. And for more videos about my journey learning to play the guitar and everything related to that journey, please hit the bell button. In the meantime, stay safe, and I'll see you again on another video coming very soon. Take care, bye bye. Thank you. Okay, so this is really annoying, the fact you can't record the Spark app from your phone, but I'm going to connect to my amplifier and we can get the serial number from the app itself. So we're just connecting. And then once we are connected, we can then go to the main menu to your hardware settings and then you'll be able to get your serial number from that page.